Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing today? It's now May the 19th. It's Saturday, about 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. I tried to fall back asleep, but it simply did not work out. So here we are, 5 in the morning, doing the technical analysis. So the way that I manage my swing positions and my day trading positions are extremely different. The way I manage my swing positions is I will definitely manage my risk a lot more than I would for, say, my day trading positions because I want to take some profit at specific times for swinging and at Add more to my positions. So it has a lot to do with managing your positions, whereas for day trading, very different mentality, right? So here was my day trading position, kind of a swing. It was a very small position to me. I took a $17,000 position, two Bitcoin only, and I took it at um, May 17th there, right? And I closed my position later in the day, or sorry, later the next day. So I took at 11 on Thursday, and I closed it at about 4.45. So that's like a, how many hours trade, guys? I can't do the math. Like a seven-hour trade, right? So I took a seven-hour trade. I'll show you guys my Excel as well, okay? Uh, it's just opening up here. Give me a second. There we go. So this was my position right here, okay? I took uh, two Bitcoin at 80.57, and I sold it about 82.39. So 80.57, and I sold it at 82.59. So this was the setup that I basically took, right? Right here. Uh, oops, my stop loss was actually at about, I think 79.50 or so like that. And my target was 82.59. So this was the profit that I took, right? So once again, just to clarify, this was about a, an eight hour trade, I believe, or sorry, a 16 hour trade. Um, I bought in at about 80.57 on Thursday and I closed it just yesterday at 82.40 ish, right? Or 82.39, whatever. Sorry, 82.39. So I yielded um after my my feeds even I yielded um two hundred and fifty seven dollars of profit yesterday right so it was a decent day um when I when I trade when I take a step back from day trading um I don't really trade as heavy as you guys have noticed right but I still look for these high probability plays and when you find these high probability plays you'll certainly end up having a much higher chance of winning especially when you are looking and hunting for uh, volatile coins that have a very high chance of going up. And you also seek these high risk, uh, sorry, low risk, um, high reward gains, right? So you look for these great risk to reward setups. So my personal philosophy is that I don't mind taking even one-to-one -one risk to reward ratios, okay? I don't mind personally because my probability of winning is high, right? So my personal win rate is somewhere between... You guys might not believe it, right? But it's well over 70%. We'll just put it that way. I don't want to throw out some big numbers because it might seem unbelievable. But because I'm looking for these high probability plays, right? Risks and rewards of 1.0 or even lower than that to me sometimes is acceptable. Now, it may not be acceptable to a lot of people, right? You guys might not have the same type of tolerance for these types of uh, risk to reward ratios. But if you guys search for these um, really good risk to reward ratios, there's no doubt in my mind that you'll eventually be very profitable, right? How could you not be profitable if you're looking for high probability plays? So with a very, very good chance of, of it leading towards a direction that you think it's going to go. So this was a pretty good risk to reward ratio, 1.7 to me. Max loss was less than 2%, which was good for me. My gain was about 2.2%, right? And my max loss was 220. My my gain was actually 357.55. So I'm still holding my positions. These actually never came through yet, right? Right there. I'm, I'm holding, I think, four Bitcoin right now. It's in a non-margin non account, of course. Um, you know, if it goes a little bit lower, um, I'm definitely going to be interested in it, right? These are, this was my swing position right here from 82.50, right? So I'm definitely interested in buying even more as it drops a little bit lower and lower. What I'm getting to is, guys, you don't need to trade heavily the way that I'm trading, right? I'm only doing that because I enjoy it and I see it as a video game. And, um, and other than that, like, I really enjoy trading, but you don't need to trade or over trade all the time, right? You can just easily take a step back, look for these high probability plays, and eventually when you find them, you just keep taking these good setups and you'll be profitable. I mean, 
I'm cool with honestly playing video games all day. Um, that's pretty much what I've been doing a lot lately, right? I'm still a kid, keep in mind, right? I'm not going to change who I am. I um, grew up in the you know, Atari generation. I grew up in the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo, the Sega Genesis, Dreamcast. Like I'm part of that generation, right? I'm in my 30s. So um, it's kind of in my blood, you know, to kind of play games still. And because I'm Asian, uh, of course, I'm going to play a lot of online games as well. It's just in our DNA. That's just an Asian joke. I'm just kidding, guys. Um, but yeah, if you just... Honestly, $300 a day keeps a real job away, you know? Even $100 a day could actually keep a real job away when you think about it like that. Now, $500 a day, you'll be doing really well. I personally average, um, you know, a good amount, but heck, I'll be happy if I make $350 by literally doing nothing except for looking for a good setup, right? Um, but anyways, let's get into some of the technical analysis. I just want to show you guys some of the positions that I take at the beginning of every single video from now on. And if you guys want to learn more about how I find these trades, definitely stay tuned for my uh, lesson videos that's coming out very shortly. I apologize for the delay. I'm more so just lazy, to be honest, to finish it. And, uh, and it requires a lot of energy and effort, which it's hard for me to muster up sometimes, right? Because these videos are an hour to two hour long. But if you guys are interested in learning more about how I personally trade and just obtaining some of these skills, make sure you guys are checking out my, um, my Udemy course that's coming out in honestly less than three days, I'm guessing. Uh, it's going to teach you a lot of the basic skills and the intermediate skills. Not not more so geared towards advanced traders, but to geared towards the beginners, definitely beginners, and the intermediate traders as well. So don't mind my hair, guys. It's, uh, it's how it is when I wake up, right? So yeah. Um, I personally believe that you guys should not ever pay for a signal service of any sort, okay? Um, those are not good because what they do is they fish for you, right? And you're basically just empowering them. What you guys need to do is empower yourselves, okay? You empower yourselves by gaining these skills. You have to make sure that your skills are up there. And that's what I want to try to help you guys out with there with my 17 to 20 lesson videos that I'm selling for just $200, to be honest. It's really cheap compared to what's out there. And I personally believe that my skills are definitely on par with some of the best professional traders in the world. So anyways, let's get on. Go to coin market cap, guys. Bitcoin right now is trending pretty decently over three hundred and seventy-three billion dollars. Like my my magic number is over three hundred and fifty billion, right? The twenty-four hour volume is definitely extremely low right now. I always make note that you don't forget, guys. That uh, guys, once this supply is capped, it's gonna take a while for us to eventually get to the last Bitcoin mine. But yeah, guys, like. Don't forget, there's still a lot more Bitcoins to be mined, right? So there's still a really long road ahead of us. We see the 24-hour volume just slowly dropping and declining over time. Now, to me, this is a signal to the market that we're not really interested in this particular price level of moving it up and up and up and up yet. There's a very strong chance of us still actually dropping down. So let's take a look at some of the signs that we're seeing. First of all, let's see other coins and how well they're doing. Excuse me, they're hiccups. So we see, let me just have some water here. All right. So we see a lot of these coins right here, mix, right? Green, red, green, red, but not, not really that high up there. BNC is doing really well right now, as you guys can see. 13%, that's huge. Steam, guys. All right, that's my coin right there. Steam is up... Uh, 10.43%. Can't complain about that, can we? And make sure you guys are also upvoting my content, right? When you guys um click on any of my Steemit links that you'll see on YouTube or on um, Twitter there, um, you guys will get to this page first. You can also go to each one and just click on upvote if you appreciate the work that I do. So other than that, let's get into the actual technical analysis now, guys. Let's review very quickly what we've been talking about, right? I've been considering this as a possible A, B, C, you know, and then basically a w, an X failure wave right there, and then an A, B, C coming down here still, right? So we hit 79.25. I predicted about 7,800-ish, right? So that's $125 off, guys. That's a really good prediction, in my opinion. And um, I'm going to keep these videos actually much more basic and to the point rather than do a very detailed technical analysis because they take up a lot of time to do a one-hour one. So now let's actually look at where we got to, right? We got to 79.25 right here, guys. 
awesome price, which is um, a very, very strong zone for you guys to perhaps want to consider, right? So we take our Fibonacci retracement right here, and I'm gonna add one more in here, unfortunately. Now, this is the talk of Twitter right now, okay? A lot of people are bearish right now. So first of all, I'm seeing a lot of amateurs start to call you guys out, but um, <laughs> I said that so um nonchalantly. But people are trying to call this like A B C D E in three 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 threes. Nah, I don't agree with that at all. I really don't agree with that at all. And now people are trying to call this as a falling wedge. How the heck is that a falling wedge? Because it looks like one. Okay, sure, it looks like one, a falling wedge, right? Now let me explain to you guys the mechanics of Elliott Wave falling wedges. I like to correct people when they're wrong. I'm sorry to have that personality, but um, yeah, I don't like it when people say incorrect things, especially when it comes to technical analysis. I'm incredibly defensive of it. All right, so some people are thinking that this is a leading diagonal, first of all, right? or a wedge of some sort. Now, I want you guys to understand one thing very clearly, okay? Is that, first of all, it could be possible if this were a leading diagonal, right? Where this is now making a five, three, five, three, five, right? But some people are calling it ending diagonals. Now, this ending diagonal only comes in a three, 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 three right? Subwave divides. And it's only actually found in the fifth position or the fifth wave or the C wave, I meant. Um, but the leading diagonal is actually found only in the first wave or the A wave, right? Which subdivides 5, 3, 5, 3, 5. People are calling this an ending um, diagonal, right? Or, or a, a falling wedge, basically. You have to be very, very concise with your um, differentiation of leading diagonals and ending diagonals because they have incredibly different characteristics. And we're going to explore both of those components together, okay? So some people are calling this a falling wedge like that. Well, if this was a falling wedge, why are you taking this point right there when this should be the actual point right here, okay? Like, just because this point looks like it's interacting with these points, it means nothing, guys. Like, you gotta be under, you gotta be really clear. You gotta really understand that. This is pure coincidence, okay? If you call this a leading first wave diagonal, right, like that, that doesn't work. It does not work, okay? Because where, what about this point? This point would have to be one. That's clearly impossible, right? So now this point right here is irrelevant. And now we're only looking at this point right there. Well, usually if you guys go to leading first wave diagonals, right, it's very clear how they look as well, all right? Uh, you know, like they, they touch, guys. Okay, the points touch, okay? One, two, three, four, and five. And then it makes a B and then it comes down, right? Does this look like this one is touching here, guys? No, it doesn't look like it's touching there at all. So anybody like Hyjin Lee, who's calling these a, like a triangle, because I know that Hyjin Lee sees triangles in absolutely everything, right? Um, no offense to him, like, but... If you're seeing that you've done Elliott wave analysis for 10 years, man, like honestly, you gotta get your triangles together. If you've if you've honestly said you've done technical analysis with Elliott wave for 10 years, not everything is a triangle. I'm sorry to say, okay? If I was Oprah, I'd be like, triangles for you, triangles for you, triangles for you, triangles for every chart. That's what I would honestly do if I was Oprah and I was handing out free triangles in every technical analysis, okay? This is not a leading first wave diagonal. This is not an ending fifth wave diagonal found in the C position or the fifth position. And this is not a leading first wave diagonal that's found in the A position or the first wave. Just to be very clear, if you guys want to check out some definitions, Google Elliott Wave PDF, okay? Just go to right here and just type in Elliott Wave PDF. It is this one right here. And I have simply disproved to all the people that have actually thought that this was a diagonal, okay? This is not a diagonal. Read your definitions, okay? This is found in the fifth wave right here. Fifth wave, that is an ending diagonal. Leading first waves are very different. They happen in the first wave, okay? First wave. This could be the, this right here. It could be an A wave, right? No, sorry, this whole thing could be an A wave where it could be a leading first wave diagonal or this whole thing could be a C wave where this was an ending diagonal as well, right? So here's an ending diagonal. One, two, three, four, five, okay? 
here's a possible expanding diagonal. One, two, three, four, five. So here's a leading first wave diagonal again. One, two, three, four, and five, right? Leading diagonal. One, two, three, four, five. And remember all the people that always say things like, well, wave four is overlapping wave one. That's simply impossible. Guys, there's so many sub rules. Does this look like it's overlapping? Yes, it's overlapping. Does this look like it's overlapping? Yes, it's overlapping, guys. Please make sure you guys are really understanding the mechanics of like leading diagonals and fourth and first, fourth and fifth. Sorry, for it's hard to say. Fourth and first wave overlaps. Okay, I appreciate you guys all trying to correct me on Twitter. But here I am putting my foot down and seeing you guys, you really got to read more than one paragraph of a 300-page of a book if you guys want to start correcting me, right? <laughs> like, uh, you know, I've read, I've read seven books on Elliott Wave, guys, like front to back multiple times, okay? So um, I'm not saying I know it all. Don't get me wrong, right? I don't know it all at all, but I definitely know where people are in the wrong trying to call this an ending fifth wave diagonal. This is, has no relevant point, okay? I know that this has been a very long rant, but guys, this is not a relevant point, okay? This is a relevant point on the uptrend, not on the downtrend, okay? The only relevant uh, point here, in my opinion, was a temporary support, which obviously didn't even hold. So now that we got this ending uh, fifth wave or ending diagonal and leading diagonals out of the way, let's actually get on with the technical analysis. So... Yeah, there, there's still a possibility, guys, that we're honestly going to come down a little bit more. So let's say that this was the attempted impulse wave up, okay? And um, this is one, two, three, four, five. This is, I'm going to show you guys the bullish scenario and the bearish scenario because my count is a little bit off right now, okay? So the original count was like this we had an A, B, and a C, like that, okay? I got the hiccups, and then we got the <laughs> we got a W, we got an X, and then we got a Y. And this officially ends our our you know our correction phase, right? A, whoops, and then we actually get a decent retracement, almost a hundred, but not quite, right? This would have been target right there, seventy seven hundred would have been perfect target. Okay. Now, if this was the bullish scenario that we're actually done and we're going up now. So if this was, guys, once again, we're done and we're going up, and this count would have been simple as A, B, and C, right? Because this does subdivide to A, B, C like that as well. Trust me, guys, it does. And now this whole thing actually fell short to the 618 Fibonacci level, but it actually fell right in between the 0.5 and the 618, which is fairly good in my opinion. Just trying to move this a little bit nicer. So if this was the bullish scenario, then we're done, okay? Entirely done. So what happens if this is the bullish scenario? Well, I'll be 100% confirmed that this is the bullish scenario, honestly, once we break above, say, 8,500-ish, right? Bullish count is validated. If this ends up making a... Let's see, let's just see. So my bullish count is validated if we break above 8,500, right? My bullish count is validated. It's definitely. Uh, I'm going to take this out. 161.8, 261.8. Yeah, let's annotate this, okay? So we'll call this right here. We'll say... Um, didn't quite hold, right? Here. You guys, makes, that makes sense, right? It didn't quite hold. So whenever a fib level doesn't hold, guys, what you want to do is you want to drop to the next lower level, right, to see if this one's going to hold. So you want to always check next.
always check the 0 0.5's fib level. I meant to say next, which also didn't hold. And we almost almost fell to the 0 0.618 fib level. Okay, that makes sense, right? There we go. So this zone should should have been a very strong laddering zone, right? Should be a strong laddering zone. So let's just say say Zay, because I'm saying zone right now. I'm saying Zay. Let's just Zay. Um, this was should have. This is now done the correction. Okay, we're gonna go see see you at 13k if we're done, right? Yeah, if if this is honestly done, see you guys at 13k. And if it is done, oh, I forgot to write on here. This is validated by a. Um, I'm trying to figure out the word of what to write. Okay, this bullish count is validated if we break above 8,500, which is a one, which is a one-to-one -one extension of this small subwave going up, going up, and will confirm that. Elliott wave theory states that wave three is often the longest and never the shortest. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna reiterate what I just mentioned here. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm exactly referring to with a white one actually now, okay? Right here. Okay, this should make a lot of sense now. Let's make this line a little bit lighter. If you guys don't know, you can actually drag and drop things, okay? Just hold down control, click on it, drag it, and drop it. And that's what happens. So see, here's my zone right there. Okay, there's a zone that I wanted to hit. So if it gets to this zone, it now confirms that Elliott Wave says that Wave 3 is often the longest and never the shortest. Now, this bullish count is validated if we break above 8500, which is a one-to-one -one extension of the small subwave going up, and will confirm that Elliott Wave states that Wave 3 is often the longest and never the shortest. So that's my personal opinion, that if we that if this actually ends up holding strong here, and this subs divides very nicely to 8500, beautiful. It'll confirm my Elliott wave count. So this is the bullish scenario, guys. Now I want to show you guys the bearish scenario. And once again, um, to be very clear, if it does break above these previous highs right here, okay, you want to play the breakout strategy, right? So if it does break above whatever the high was here, um, 82.77, you might want to consider buying on it, right? So let's say you entered on a breakout above there, and you you targeted something fairly decent, okay? So you right here for a very short-term play, right? You say, As soon as it breaks above there, you might want to risk about 1% or even slightly lower or right here, slightly below this down here, I'm saying. Go to 8,500 roughly. You still get yourself a pretty decent high probability play. Like this is a, you know, it's not the ideal setup for a lot of people and some people might even laugh at this setup. But guys, you gotta understand, you gotta learn how to differentiate between day traders and swing traders, right? Day traders will look for heavy volatility and they might focus on capitalizing on many small gains throughout the day. So percentage gains, yes, it's very important for to go for these big percentage gains. But as an investor, say, of course their percentage gains are gonna be much greater than a day traders because the volatility doesn't happen to the 50-60% level on a daily level. But for, for example, investing long term over months, yeah, you can see thousands of percents of gains, right? Right? So you have to understand how to differentiate between how we all profit on the, throughout different strategies. So this is a very interesting setup to take, right? Wouldn't you guys agree with me? Now that is a very, very interesting setup to me. And uh, I'm, it's, it's looking really juicy. It's definitely on my mind right now, okay? My stop loss will probably be slightly lower than these regions here at 80, 85, 81.30 or so. Okay, if it breaks, so you guys got to understand, right? If it breaks above 80 whatever that is, 8178, good chance to hit 8500 for a one-to-one -one extension, okay? 
So I'll post this on my Steemit. This is going to be my next trade that I'll be taking probably if it breaks above there. Um, and I'll probably end up adding a lot more to my position as well. For my for my longer term position, that is for my swing position, not for my day trading position. Alrighty, so I'm just pasting this very quickly on Steam. It. You guys want to see the bearish view now? Yeah, you do. You want to see the bearish view? Okay, let's talk about the bearish view. Now, the bearish view is interesting, and it's an alternate count, and it might not be my main count though, because we'll talk about why. Okay. This looks more accurate to me. Now the WXY could go down to here, okay? Now this is scary, all right? We're gonna talk about all of this right here. So the reason why this might not actually be done is because what if this right here makes A, B, and boom, 7200 to C? right because what if that is now the count where this one is now not an abc but that this actually perfectly divides as well into both of these ways so that can now be a very interesting count wouldn't you guys agree okay take a look at this now where this subdivides into five like that one two three four and five this just made the b it's definitely a perfect extension of this b wave right there uh i think dead cat bounce level right yeah pretty much dead cat bounce level scary what a dead cat cat bounce refers to is basically a dead cat bouncing okay it just it's as literal as it is um <laughs> it bounces very slightly and then it's still dead <laughs> still gonna die I know it's a horrible thing to say but I'm not the one that made up these analogies or these names so if we also take a one to one extension of the dead cat bounce level right here unfortunately we are seeing 72 to 7300 levels right yeah <laughs> this is a perfect one to one extension you guys gotta remember right that this right here made a one-to-one -one extension, okay? This one, this one here made a perfect, beautiful one-to-one -one extension. And this one could as well. Okay, so this first ABC made a perfect one-to-one -one extension. Therefore, assume the next, assume the same in the next ABC since this is likely a WXY. X denotes failure, which I want to point out. I'll make this yellow to keep it consistent. Denotes failure right here. And Y between a between x and y i want to make sure you guys understand this between x and y another abc occurs okay i i don't i don't agree at all by the way i want to be very clear with the people who are saying this is some sort of abcde okay no nah, this is not an abcde of any sort guys and i will gladly disprove anybody who thinks it is <laughs> i'm sorry to say it so confidently but man, this does not subdivide into threes. Like, I don't know where these people are getting this information from, but they really got to go read more books. And they're people who have like a massive following, following as well on Twitter and stuff like that, you know, or yeah, very difficult for me to believe that this is not an XYZ failure or sorry, WXY failure. So this is the bearish count, right? Down to 8,000 or sorry, 7,000. 200 to 7,300 range. I'm never that precise, right? 100 bucks to me is like, you know, nothing in terms of the range. But if you guys want me to be clear, like, oh, we're going to say 730, 71, 7,200. I'll just say 7,250 or 7,350 to be very sure that you guys understand. 
So bearish count, we head down to 7,200 to 7,350 range. Between this X and Y, another ABC occurs. And now we are actually finding confluent zones. Okay. We're finding confluent zones between here. Now, another possibility, of course, is, you know, we just head down to right here, right? We just head to the FIB level right there, or we head down to here. So these are going to be one of the key regions to be looking at. Head down to possibly one. Actually, I'll make it a a. No, let's say one zero point six fib region at zero seven thousand seven thousand eight hundred range, and this one will be second option, right? Zero point seven eight six now, unfortunately region at okay so that makes sense okay i hope this makes a lot of sense to you guys it needs to make a lot of sense because uh yeah like you guys have to make sure that you're you're increasing your skills as a technical analyst right i don't want to see you guys fall behind the last thing you want to do guys is honestly make a lot of no, don't get me wrong, actually. It's good to make a lot of mistakes, right? Learn from your lessons. But the best thing to do is pick up good habits from the beginning. Because if you pick up really bad habits, like thinking everything is an A, B, C, D, E, or everything is a triangle because lines connect, your probability of finding these high probability setups of being successful is going to severely diminish because you have the basic principles and the fundamentals from the beginning wrong so you definitely don't want to do that and i want to set you guys up for success not set you guys up for failure right you don't want to be another x that you know it's failure <laughs> that might have been the first elliot wave joke that i've ever made before but don't forget guys if you guys love elliot wave you guys also have to make sure that you get the Colgate Zigzag Toothbrush, okay? It's right here. They also come in a six-pack, which is what I love to get. So this is a Zigzag. If you guys love Elliott Wave, make sure you pick up Zigzags. They're the best ones. And I'm not talking about the rolling paper kind, okay? I'm talking about the toothbrush kind of kind. <laughs> so anyways, this is kind of my bearish count right here. hate to say it, guys, but I'm more so leaning towards the bearish count. Oh, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me, guys. I'm sorry, okay? This this is going to be a, a very strong laddering zone right here, okay? And I'm going to talk to you guys about it very quickly. This region, this price range, if we do break below it, okay? Below the... This count is validated if we break 79.25. This is the bear. This is that candle right there. So we break this support, guys. Seventy nine twenty five. Count on it, okay? Count on it. I I just wanna. I'm so picky about how I annotate lately, right? Bearish count is validated if we break to 79.25. I just want you guys to be very clear, or I want to be very clear so you guys don't have any misunderstandings, all right? So this line right there, okay? This makes sense? Right there, the 79.25 is low. So if we broke, whoa, what just happened, guys? Oh, it moved over. I didn't do that. <laughs> that was kind of weird. All right, okay. So this is the bearish count. Now, if we break below that, guys, please be interested. I'm no financial advisor, but I think I think you guys know already what I'm trying to say, okay? If we do break uh, 7,925, this region should be an extremely strong ladder opportunity. Okay, so if we do break 8,900, and 20 or sorry 79 25 range this region should be an extremely long ladder opportunity between 
between the 0 0.618 and 0 0.786 fib region. And also keep in mind what I've been seeing for a while, right? That the 786 fib region has been the flavor of the month. So, uh, yeah, I still think we might get up to 7,800, right? Or down there. But you guys also have to understand that just because I said before that, hey, we're going down to 7,800, it doesn't mean it's going to go there. It just means that's where it's it's has a possibility of going, right? It's probable. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it probable? Yeah. Is it guaranteed? Definitely not, right? So the reason why we identify these zones that have high probabilities of bouncing based on price action and history, and just a bunch of technical analysis theories, right? Um, yeah, like you definitely want to be focusing on them, right? You want to ladder your buys as it's getting closer to these regions. Don't ever be one of those people that are like, oh, I was waiting for 7,900. <sighs> Unfortunately, it never got there. You guys cannot buy at one single price point, okay? Never ever buy at one single price point. Always make sure that you're buying at multiple price points as it's dropping down. That's how, that's how you dollar cost average if you had a fixed amount that you'd like to invest every single month, right? or every day or whatever. And laddering is a great way to ensure that you're not stuck in one position only. So please don't be one of those people that says, yeah, I was waiting for 1700 because I saw in your TA it might get there. Yeah, well, smart people would have bought at 7950, right? <laughs> That's what I did. I'm not saying you guys are not smart, but I bought at 7950 because I realized from my longer term positions that it might not get to 7800. If it gets there, bonus, right? And then it bounces off of it heavily. If it only got to 7950, but it then bounced from there, then I would look for key zones to add more. And right now, for my swing positions, it seems like my interest to add more, keep in mind, I'm in a position for 79.50 for my longer term positions that are not in a margin account or not in margin traded whatsoever. Um, I'm interested in Bitcoin again at 8,500 and about 8,900 as well. The reason I say that is because this is the 8,500 range that I was talking about in my bullish count. And also if we break above the X point around 8,900, or 8,800 more like it, that's where I'm definitely going to be adding more to my position. These two points right now, 85 and 89, are kind of pivotal to me, and I believe that we're going to get some strong reactions at these price points. So keep in mind, guys, if we break above whatever this high was, 82.75 or something, we'll see that bearish count of mine with a possible position to 8,500. So it's a really good position to be considering. And on the short side as well, this is the position to to play, right? If it breaks 79.25. Easy. Easy plays. You can go target one, right? So target one, you can set your stop loss around 8,000. Yeah, AK is a very reasonable stop loss there. I'm going to write here 79.25, actually. It's just so everybody's on the same page. And this one as well. I will enter at 79.25, okay? 79.25. That's where I'm looking at to short, okay? This is the short opportunity, 79.25. Stop loss will be at 8,000 on the nose. So if it's shorts here, this, this will be my short day trading opportunity as well. And this is target one, right? This is target one, that's target two, right? Make sense, guys? T1, T2. T1, T2. You guys always need to have an understanding of these basic uh, risk to rewards, okay? So let's talk about risk to reward now, since it's been my favorite topic for a very long time. So risk to reward setups, guys. We're going to talk about targeting first of all. Okay, we're going to just play two Bitcoin, sure. Actually, I'll probably end up playing four Bitcoin for my day trade. Yeah, I'll probably play like 40K or something. So my purchase price will be at 79.25. Well, wrong one, sorry. Uh, T1. So T1, T2, okay. So my purchase price will be 79.25. And my first target price is about 7,800, right? Around there. And my second target price is around, I think it was 7,300. We'll see, okay? 
So that's a pretty uh, stop loss was at 8K. So that's a really good risk to reward, guys. Like, honestly, that's a really good risk to reward of 8.33. And I'm literally risking only 1%. Why would I not want to take this trade, right? It'd be silly not to take this trade. Yeah, really silly not to take this trade. Even if it was at the 7,800 range, right? This one's a 1.67 risk to reward. I'm probably going to end up taking this trade as well. I mean, I'm going to lose $312 if I get stopped out. If I get a chance to gain, um, you know, 487 It's still a very high probability play if we break the 7,925 range, right? It's only $125 profit, but to me, it's still over 1%, 1.5%. And for a day trader, it's acceptable to me, right? Keep in mind that it's always different to other people. Now, some people might be targeting profits severely differently than how other people may, but it's always to each their own. Just make sure you understand and respect that fact, right? Just because someone says, ha, you're an idiot for taking a 1.4% gain or 1.5% gain, doesn't mean his way or her way is better than your way or whoever's way, right? All that it comes down to at the end is making good trades and developing your own style. You guys are unique people, okay? You have unique personalities and you will have very unique uh, styles as well when it comes to trading. And believe it or not, you discover what kind of person you are very much so when you are trading. Uh, you find out very quickly what kind of emotions you go through. <laughs> and uh, trading can really do that to you, right? It can put you through turmoil. So other than that, guys, I think we're done. These, uh, Yeah, we got some very, very good charts in today, I think. And uh, I apologize for not giving you guys a detailed update yesterday. It wasn't really much of an update. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with my charts and stuff, you know? So not only that, everyone's like, yeah, you're doing YouTube and stuff for the money. No, guys, I don't do YouTube for the money, just so you guys know, okay? Like, here's my YouTube Steam it. This is not accurate at all where it says I'm getting $238, okay? So, yeah, sure, I'm getting like, you know, 20, 30 bucks a day on YouTube. But trust me, guys, I'm not making a lot of YouTube videos for the monetization at all here. So other than that, I think this helps a lot, guys. So make sure you're aware of all these possible targets of mine, right? I always cover the bearish and the bullish count. And the reason I, I do this, like a lot of people say things, um, yeah, like I find that the people say the weirdest things, right? They say things like, oh, so you're guessing it's going to go up so, or you're going to guess it's going to go down. Yeah, guys, that's kind of what we do, right? We guess it's going to go up or down and then we find out targets if it goes down and targets if it goes up. And then uh, we just look for key places for us to be entering a trade, right? So once we try to look for these unforeseen circumstances and plan for surprises, we can react to them a lot better as they actually happen as well. So just to give you guys a quick summary as well, uh, what should the tone be, guys? Help me out with the tone here on the, on the bearish, on the bullish side. A break above. We're talking about very short term, okay? Uh, what was it? Yeah, it's still a lot of pressure. I didn't really do any candlestick analysis, right? I'll do it this afternoon, actually. There's so many different ways to do TA, guys, that uh, it's really difficult to, to get into everything, right? So... Um, looks like it's trending up. Keep an eye for 8,500, right? That was a key thing for me to say earlier. 85 will be an awesome place for you guys to look at. Great risk to reward setups as well, okay? Oh, jeez, this one covered it, guys. That's so irritating. Can I, can I fix it? I gotta go all the way back. You're kidding me, guys. No, it won't, it won't do it anymore. I don't even remember what I wrote in there. But um, yeah, this was a good setup, guys, right here, okay? This should be a strong laddering zone. Always check the 0 0.5 FIB next, which also didn't hold, and we almost fell to the 0 0.618 level, right? So the bearish, the bullish count is validated to me is if we break above 8,500, right? Break above 8,500. The bullish count is validated if we break above 8,500, which is a one-to-one -one extension. If you guys want to see this chart, maybe go back in the video and uh, take a look at what it said, right? Because <laughs> um, this chart's not going to help, obviously, at all. But it's the bearish count that I'm more so worried about, right? Because we find confluent zones, which I should probably annotate right here, right? We find confluency. 
Which is the scary part, actually, guys. Is that even a word, confluency? I gotta Google that. Or is it confluently? Ha! <laughs> it's confluent, but is confluently a word? <laughs> like, I just wanna know. Yeah, it is a word. But confluency is not a word, okay? <laughs> confluency is clearly not a word. It is a word! But it refers to different contexts. This is referring to biology. Okay, I'm going to say the word confluently now. Okay, so this confluently right here. Sorry. Uh, where is it? This confluently hits the ABC one-to-one -one extension and the 0 0.786 fib level. Right? Is that scary, guys? Whoops. Right there. Is that scary right there? So if this does actually happen, I'm going to be not surprised in the least, guys. I'm sorry to say, okay? Oh, I don't want to redo all the chart because I took out the um, risk and reward ones already as well. Okay, I guess I'm going to leave it at that, guys. You have all my charts ready. I apologize for being a little bit scatterbrained here today. Um, but yeah, you got all my charts. And um, I hope I have, it has helped you in some way or another. And thank you very much for all the love and the support. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share my material if you guys think that it's helped you in one way or another. And please make sure you also upvote my content on Steemit. When you guys first go to Steemit, you'll be met with this page right here. And you can just see which ones you might have forgotten to upvote. Every time you guys actually upvote it, like I get, I don't know, like three cents or something, guys. Like you just do the math, right? Right here. You take $9. Divided by 300. Yeah, I'm getting like three cents every time you guys literally click on a button. Enough people click on it, it definitely helps out, right? One way or another. Sometimes each click only gets a dollar, depending on how much influence you have. Sometimes they actually get three cents. Or sorry, sometimes each one only gets a penny. Like this one right here, for example, right? 261, 278. But some of them, you actually get three pennies, depending on how much influence you have in the Steam and community. So thanks for all the appreciate, uh, thanks for all the support and the love that you guys have given me. I appreciate all the love and the support as always. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video. Have yourself a great day, and please always look for these high probability setups. And please be interested in Fibonacci levels as well when they reach very critical points. Have a great day, traders. Bye now.